Hello, dear viewer. MurdochX here with some terrible news for you, eh? I found a new extreme sports game that I'd never heard of and decided to make a video about it, so now you have to watch that video. At the end, I will be offering refunds. I'm sorry. Wakeboarding Unleashed featuring Sean Murray, not to be confused with the Sean Murray of No Man's Sky. No, this Sean Murray made a name for himself as a skier who moved into wakeboarding during college. Also, he never lied about his video game to sell it, and that's just one of the many things that I love about this Tony Hawk style of game. Although, No Man's Sky never had me stuck trying to grind over an alligator pit for 15 minutes. 15 minutes? Man, I really got stuck there, but we'll come back to that. First, let's talk about the game developer, Shaba Games. They got their start with a PS1 game called Grind Session, which must have impressed Activision because two years after that game was released, Activision bought them and put them in charge of making Matt Hoffman's Pro BMX and Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 3. Yes, Wakeboarding Unleashed was developed by the same team that created the highest rated game for the PlayStation 2. They're also responsible for Shrek Super Slam, which is a highly underrated game. That's gross! Speaking of underrated, that's the same term I'd use to describe this game. You've got jumping by holding and releasing X, grab tricks with the square button, grinding with triangle, etc. What sets this game apart from the Tony Hawk games of the time is that it's a more linear style of play since your character is being pulled behind a boat. While this is a limiting factor, it brings in some interesting gameplay mechanics. You can release the rope at any time and go any direction you choose, but you'll lose momentum. Lose too much momentum and you'll just sort of dip into the water and respawn back on the track, but if you're able to get back in range of the boat, you can have the rope tossed back out to you and continue wakeboarding. This feature creates a fun risk versus reward system when you're trying to rack up points, and it's also a system that lends itself to secret paths. Because of this linear stage design, this feels more like the downhill stages in the old Tony Hawk games. Remember collecting the letters C-O-M-B-O all in one trick combo? This game has that, but now it's called count to five or count to ten. Every stage has objectives to complete either while traversing the stage normally or by switching to challenge mode which gives you specific tasks to complete within a short amount of time. The boating aspect also plays a big role in the feel of the game. There are challenges where you'll be controlling the speedboat and even a multiplayer co-op mode where one player wakeboards while the other drives the boat. Drives? Do people drive boats? It's not a sail if it uses a motor, right? Since you're being pulled behind a boat with a rope, you can only veer so far to either side, and the control shifts if you do let go of the rope since you will no longer be pulled back towards the center of the lane. This is jarring at first, and you'll have to experiment with it and give yourself some room to aim before you decide to let go of the rope. Another gameplay mechanic that sets this game apart from the Tony Hawk series is the wake following the boat. This will always be there as sort of a quarter pipe to jump from. Using this in tandem with the double tap jump can get you some major air and is a great way to start a combo. Combos can be linked together in a few different ways. Landing in a grind is always an option. We have manuals in this game to link combos, and there's even reverts if you're landing on a quarter pipe. If you're not familiar with these terms, let me try saying it this way. You can keep going from trick to trick in a long chain to rack up massive scores using various techniques depending on the terrain. Jumping, landing, grinding, and water surface tricks can be mixed and matched until you either fail a trick and lose all of the points you had accrued, or if you successfully land after a long set of tricks, then those sweet, sweet points are yours to keep. Ooh, those are some good points. Delicious. <laughs> uh, I wrote it. I have to read it. Playing the first three stages should give you a good understanding of the game, which is fantastic because stage four, stage five if you count the tutorial, is a competition stage where you will be expected to show off your skills. Board sliding for 200 feet is no easy task, but that's what makes this game so great. As someone who has played a lot of Tony Hawk games, I'm familiar with these controls, but this game still manages to spank me and make me feel like a noob with the parts that are different. But you know what? Relearning to play with these altered physics and stage styles has been amazing. I don't have a whole lot to say about this game because it's really just a variant on skating games, but that's okay. This game has been one of the biggest surprises in my collection so far. I only bought this game so I could take a cheap shot at No Man's Sky, but it ended up being a great game. So here I am making a video and telling you to buy this game before everyone else figures out how good it is and it becomes impossible to find. So on that note, I'm not going to be doing the whole rating thing because I haven't played very far into this game, but what I have played I absolutely loved. This game currently has a score of 83 out of 100 on Metacritic, so it looks like the other three people who own this game also enjoyed it. Seriously, 
This sells for about $5 right now and it is well worth that price. The only complaint that I do have about this game is that the difficulty sort of spikes out of nowhere. That grinding for 200 feet segment was hard and there was also a challenge where you have to grind over an alligator pit that I spent 15 minutes on before I decided to stop playing for the day. It was a segment where you have to go towards the grinding area, release the rope, grind a rail, hop to the right, grind another rail, grab the rope again to gain speed, hop, then grind, release the rope, then jump to the left and I kept dying so I'm not entirely sure what was supposed to happen next. This was a humbling experience and I will 100% be coming back to this game if for no other reason than to beat this stupid challenge. Hey look at that! It does say boat driving here in the manual. When has an instruction manual ever been wrong? You know what? Don't, don't answer that. I actually do answer that, but down in the comments section. Like, let me know when an instruction manual has been wrong or what the term for driving a boat would be. And also subscribe. Um, earlier in the video I mentioned Shrek Super Slam, also by Shaba Games. This is another like underrated game that not many people know about. It's fantastic. And I've made a video about it before, so I'm going to link to it right here. So if you've never heard of this game, go ahead and click that, check it out. This is a surprisingly good game. It's another fantastic game on the PlayStation 2 that not a lot of people know about. And also, I love you. Let's get married, but... You gotta do it fast before your dad finds out and ruins everything. And click that like button.